Hi, that can here. Tonight I'm reading part two of Four Mice Deep in a Jungle, number five in the Geronimo Stilton series. But first, let's take a look at cheeses from around the world. Today's cheese is Aibe, or Aib, an Ethiopian cheese characterized by its mild flavor and crumbly texture, similar to Greek feta. The cheese is traditionally served as a side dish to soften the effect of very spicy food. Now let's find out what's happening with Geronimo tonight. When we last left off, Geronimo had been tricked into signing up for the To the Last Whisker Survival School. With all of his fears, how's he going to last? So, if you're sitting comfortably, let's begin. I'm afraid of bugs. The jeep made its way along a paved road. Soon the road turned into a beaten track. Then it became a muddy path. It was so hot I felt like a walking sprinkler. I was dripping sweat. Clouds of mosquitoes swarmed around me. They were having a party in my fur. I figured my tail was their dinner. They were making a meal out of it. What if they gave me some rare disease? I'm afraid of diseases. We reached the camp in the middle of the night. It looked like an army barracks. It stood in the middle of a clearing surrounded by very tall trees. I was so tired I fell onto a smelly bunk bed. I tried not to think about the fleas that were probably crawling in it. Ugh! I'm afraid of bugs. Exhausted, I fell asleep fully dressed. That night I kept hearing Trap's voice in my dreams. Just don't think about it, he chanted over and over. Day one. Monday. At dawn, Penelope gave me a wake-up call. She poured a bucket full of icy water on my head. Line up, she shrieked. I looked outside. That's when I discovered there were four other mice taking this crazy jungle course. I was about to slip into the green jumpsuit I had found in my closet. But even though I was in the hot jungle, I put on a clean undershirt first. I love my undershirts. I wear one all the time, even in the summer. That's because I'm afraid of drafts. Unfortunately, Penelope was watching me. Before I could put one paw through my undershirt, she snatched it away and squeaked at the top of her lungs. Real mice don't wear undershirts, Stilton. I cringed. Then I put on the jumpsuit. Penelope threw an enormous backpack at me. It weighed a ton. I'd be lucky if I could take one paw step. Meanwhile, Penelope lifted her own backpack without batting an eyelash. Then I followed her outside. Forward march, she yelled. We left camp and began our long trek. I introduced myself to the other mice. Good morning, everyone, I said. My name is Stilton, Geronimo Stilton. A big, tough, muscled mouse nodded at me. He wore his fur in a crew cut. I'm Bert Burley Rat, but you can call me BB, he announced. I'm a forest ranger. Next to BB stood a short round rodent. He clasped my paw. How do you do? My name is Tubby Tumblemouse, he said. Then he whispered, My friends call me Furball. I smiled. Tubby seemed like a nice mouse. I wondered why he had signed up for this course. Tubby told me he was a cheese sales mouse. He had put on a few extra pounds eating too many samples. I thought this was an easy weight loss course. Miss Poisonfur told me it would be like a mini vacation, he explained. Sweat dripped down his fur. She didn't tell me we'd be forced to run twenty miles a day. B -b -b what? I stammered, sinking under the heavy backpack. Twenty miles a day? I'm never going to make it. I've got low blood pressure. I've got low iron. I've got low self-esteem. This is going to be worse than I thought. Oh, how did I get myself into this mess? I sobbed, burying my snout in my paws. Tubby put his paw around my shoulder. Don't panic, Geronimo, he whispered. I've brought an emergency supply of cheese sandwiches. They're hidden in my backpack. Just then, a teenage mouse with pigtails scampered over. Hi there, she chirped. I'm Susie Squeakers. Next came an elderly female rodent. She was small and skinny with wiry fur. She wore a pair of thick glasses and a purple baseball cap. She introduced herself as Sandy Silverfur. Sandy was old, but you wouldn't find her in any old mouse home. Not yet, anyway. 
Sandy loved to live dangerously. In fact, you could say she was a bit of a daredevil. She once went scuba diving off the shores of Tomcat Island. Unlike Sandy and BB, hiking through the jungle was not my idea of a good time. Within minutes, my paws were covered with blisters. Suddenly, a terrible screeching filled the air. It was Penelope singing. I'm a wild road and I have a wild heart. Nothing ever scares me because I'm tough and smart. This course is really super. You learn to be a trooper. You learn to march and sweat and sing. You learn to do most anything. I grumbled. That was the most ridiculous song I'd ever heard. Who likes to march? But soon the rest of the group was singing along. Well, you wouldn't catch me joining in. I wasn't into singing. I was having enough trouble just breathing. Then someone waved the contract under my snout. It was Penelope. You signed it, Stilton? Now sing, she demanded. Sing, or you'll be sorry. Her beady little eyes drilled right through me. I shivered. Then I sang at the top of my lungs. I was so busy singing, I hardly noticed we had entered the forest. Trees as tall as skyscrapers surrounded us. The foliage was so thick we couldn't see any sunlight. The trees were home to all kinds of animals. They called to one another as we passed by. Monkeys, parrots, cheetahs, and snakes watched our every move. We were like rodent celebrities at an awards show. Only no one was snapping our picture. Instead, they were snapping their teeth. This tropical jungle was a very scary place. One wrong poor step, and we'd all be history. We marched, and marched, and marched, and marched, and then we marched some more. We didn't even stop for a meal. Instead, Penelope handed out sandwiches as we hiked. Unfortunately, they were not cheese sandwiches. They were made of mashed fleas. I had never seen anything so gross in my life. Some of the fleas were still kicking their tiny legs. I was so disgusted. But I was so hungry, I ate every bite. We were allowed to stop only to go to the bathroom. Penelope timed us. Fifteen seconds for each mouse. For any other emergency, we had to hand in a written request. I quickly jotted down a note. Dear Ms. Poisonfur, it read, would it be possible to take a short break? Penelope read the note out loud, then laughed. You silly rodents are spineless, she smirked. You're as soft as a bowl of cheese with extra cream, Stilton. She twirled her tail, deep in thought. This may be harder than I thought, she murmured. But don't worry, I'll fix you. When you're done with this course, you'll be stronger than a maximum strength glue trap. And best of all, you'll be smarter than the sharpest street mouse in all of New Mouse City. We marched for the rest of the day. When it turned dark, the jungle became even more terrifying. Spooky shadows were everywhere. Strange eyes glowed in the trees. Night birds sang to one another. And I'm not talking happy jingles. These songs sounded more like creepy Halloween music. Worst of all, it was dark, very dark. Did I mention? I'm afraid of the dark. But I was forced to forget about it. I had to put one paw in front of the other. I had no choice. Finally, at midnight, we stopped. We were so tired. We sat around a fire. Come and get it, shouted Penelope, banging on a pot with a spoon. I was starving. I grabbed my bowl and began to slurp up the reddish liquid. Seconds later, I started to gag. Bleah! What's this? I cried. Penelope sneered. That's red ant soup, Stilton, she squeaked. Eat it, or you'll be sorry. The rest of us looked at one another. We looked at the soup. Then we looked at Penelope. She glared at us, her paws planted firmly on her hips. The soup looked scary, but Penelope looked like a rabid cat about to go on a hunting spree. Like robots, we picked up our spoons and ate. I was so tired I could hardly chew. Later, I fell asleep with my snout in my bowl. Oh well, at least no one was bothered by my snoring. Day 2, Tuesday. The next morning, Penelope woke me up with another bucket full of icy water. Line up, she yelled. Had she ever heard of an alarm clock? After a breakfast of grilled beetles, we continued our marching. We marched non-stop until noon. I was hoping Penelope had decided to give us a break, but instead she gave us a crash course in first aid. I must admit she taught us some pretty neat things. 
We even learned mouse-to-mouse -mouse resuscitation. I guess we were all doing okay until lunch. That's when Tubby lost it. After eating his snail burger, he decided to dig into his secret supply of cheese sandwiches. But before he could take a single bite, Penelope caught him. She threw all the sandwiches into the river. Poor Tubby was beside himself. I want to go home, he sobbed. But Penelope just waved the contract under his snout. Too late, Tubster, she shrieked. You signed it! In a sudden fit, Tubby snatched a paper from a paw. Then he shoved it in his mouth and chewed it up. He looked so pleased with himself. But Tubby's excitement didn't last long. In a flash, Penelope had pulled out another contract from her backpack. That was just a copy, Tubby Tails, she chuckled. I have the original in my office. Tubby's whiskers drooped. He hung his head. His tail dragged on the ground. I had never seen a mouse look so beaten. Here, have my snail burger, I insisted. I'll skip lunch. Tubby thanked me with tears in his eyes. Geronimo, you're a true friend. I will never forget you, he cried. After lunch, it was back to marching. At last, we reached the Rio Mosquito. A rope hung over the water, stretched between two trees. The river roared downstream, picking up anything in its path. I saw twigs. I saw tree trunks. I saw a houseboat filled with monkeys. Everything was swept away in the raging current. I'm scared, I squeaked. I'm afraid of drowning. Penelope rolled her eyes. Get moving or you'll be sorry, she demanded. We did as we were told. What choice did we have? I grabbed the rope and began to cross the river. One paw at a time, I told myself. Slowly, we made our way to the other side. I was doing it. But suddenly, disaster struck. Someone was crying. I'm so hungry, I'm going to faint, Tubby wailed. Seconds later, the rope slipped from his paws. He hit the water with a loud splash. What could I do? I dove in after him. Tubby's snout was already under water. I quickly grabbed hold of his tail. Groaning, I dragged him onto the bank. Then I gave him mouse-to-mouse -mouse resuscitation. It worked! Thank you! You saved my life! squeaked a grateful Tubby. I grinned. I felt like a super-mouse when he does a good deed. Too bad I wasn't really super-mouse. If I were, I could have flown right home. Still, I was proud of myself for facing another fear. I guess Penelope was proud of me, too. You're learning, Stilton, she sniggered. You're learning. Day 3, Wednesday Today is a day of rest, shouted Penelope the next morning. As usual, she had woken us up with a bucket full of icy water. Today we will build a tree house, Penelope continued. Stilton, you'll be the first one to climb that tree over there. She pointed to a tree. It wasn't just any old tree. It was the tallest tree I'd ever seen in my life. Up, up, up it went. I got dizzy just looking at it. I, I can't climb that tree, I stammered. I'm afraid of heights. Just then, a small paw tapped my shoulder. It was Susie Squeakers. Don't worry, she whispered. I'm a friend of Pinky Pick. She sent me along to help you. Susie handed me a pink envelope. It was a letter from Pinky. Have I told you about Pinky Pick? She's a young assistant at my office. I'm sure you can guess Pinky's favourite colour. It's pink, of course. Pinky has pink sneakers and rides a pink bicycle to work. She will only write on pink paper and loves squeaking on her pink cell phone. I guess you could say Pinky is sort of hung up on the colour pink. One winter she lost her favourite pink mittens. She had to wear blue ones instead. Poor Pinky cried for weeks. Now, I bent over Pinky's letter. Pinky Pick, assistant to the boss. Dear boss, you can trust Susie Squeakers. She's my best friend. Susie is a gerbil scout. She got her wilderness badge last year. She spent one whole night in the woods outside her mouse hole. Good luck, Pinky Pick. P.S. If you make it back alive, can I have a pink computer? Susie winked at me. When Penelope wasn't looking, she began to follow me up the tree. Immediately I felt faint. Don't look down, Susie advised. It was good advice. If I didn't look down, I couldn't tell how high up we had climbed. I breathed a sigh of relief. This was no big deal. We were only a few feet off the ground. I probably could have jumped down if I'd wanted to. I pretended I was climbing up the steps to my mouse hole. 
Oh, it would be so nice to be home. Home with my cheese-filled fridge. Home with my treasured books. I glanced down at my paws. Big mistake. No, I wasn't at home. Far from it. I was up. So high even Penelope poison fur looked harmless. My head began to spin. I was going to fall. Newspaper headlines flashed before my eyes. Geronimo Stilton killed in a terrible fall. Jungle terrorizes publisher. Stilton's last squeak. Just then, someone grabbed my tail. It was Susie. It's okay, she shrieked. I got you. I was so happy, I could have jumped for joy. Luckily, I remembered where I was just in time. I was happy, but I wasn't a cheese head. I wasn't about to let go of that tree. At last we came to a very long branch with thick leaves. This is the perfect spot to build our shelter, announced Susie. Together we built a ladder out of some tree limbs. Before long, our tree house was looking great. I was so proud of myself and my new friends. And best of all, I realized being up so high wasn't that scary after all. Not bad for a bunch of city mice, Penelope admitted when we were finished. Not bad at all. That night I dreamt that Pinky Pick was winking at me. What do you say, boss? she squeaked. Can I have that pink computer now? Can I, boss? Day 4, Thursday The next morning I woke up to a pair of singing birds. The sun warmed my fur. I stretched. For the first time since I had arrived in the jungle, I felt great. But what was different about today? I just couldn't put my paw on it. Then it hit me. A bucket full of icy water right on my snout. Penelope poison first snickered. Then she barked out orders. Line up, she squeaked. Today you'll learn to use a compass. Each of you must find your way to our next campsite before nightfall. And you must do it on your own. I shuddered. But I'm afraid to be left on my own in the forest. I cried. Too late. Everyone had already left. I was alone in the forest. This was worse than the time I got separated from my Uncle Nibbles at the marvellous Mousetail Circus. At least that time the Rat Clowns kept me laughing. Now there wasn't a rodent in sight. Monkeys shrieked at me from the trees. Snakes hissed from behind the rocks. Even the singing birds sounded scary. I jumped at every noise. I was like a furry rubber band ready to snap. I decided I'd better study the map. This will be easy as cheese pie, I told myself. All I had to do was to figure out how to get to the camp. Um, let's see, I mumbled. I am here. Or maybe I'm here. And then I'm headed there. Or maybe there. I checked the compass. North, south, east, west. It wasn't as easy as I'd thought. I tried giving myself a pep talk. You can figure it out, Stilton, I insisted. Just use your brain. But my brain must have been taking a cheese break. Half an hour later, I burst into tears. Rotten rat's teeth, I squeaked. I'm lost. I roamed the jungle for hours. Every now and then I would stop to have a good cry. Oh, how could my family do this to me? They said they wanted to help me, but maybe they just wanted to get rid of me. Yes, that had to be it. If I were gone, my sister would probably sell the rodent's gazette. She'd buy a beauty salon and get her fur done every day for free. My cousin would move into my large comfy mouse hole. He was such a slob, he'd make a mess of my pretty cat fur rug. Just thinking about it made me angry. I'm going to make it back if it kills me, I cried, stamping my paw. Suddenly, I heard a rustling sound in the leaves. I gulped. Maybe I shouldn't have used the word kill? I didn't want to give some wild animal any ideas. Grabbing a big stick for protection, I hid behind a tree. Just then, I saw a bush move. Take that, you wild animal, I shrieked, striking with all my might. Ouch! a voice cried out. A rodent crawled out from behind the bush. No, it wasn't a wild animal at all. It was Bert Burley Rat. Oh, I'm so sorry, B.B., I apologized. I thought you were about to attack me. Bert rubbed his head. He looked annoyed. By now, he had sprouted a huge bump on his forehead. I felt bad about the bump, but I didn't feel bad about running into B.B. With his help, I could definitely get to the new camp. After all, B.B. had said he was a forest ranger. A forest ranger should be able to read the map and a compass, right? Let's get going, he ordered, sounding like an army general. I hopped to my paws. B.B. checked the compass. This way, he shouted, storming off. 
the compass is never wrong. I scurried behind him. Phoebe wasn't exactly the friendliest mouse around. I mean, I wouldn't invite him over for one of my Aunt Honeywhisker's yummy cheddar casseroles. But I didn't care. I just wanted to get out of this creepy jungle. After a while, I started to worry again. We'd been hiking for five hours, but we didn't seem to be getting anywhere. Um, Bibi, shouldn't we be there by now? I asked, wiping sweat from my fur. He shot me a look. I told you, Stilton, this is the right direction, he shrieked. The compass is never wrong. After two more hours, my paws were killing me. Bibi kept insisting we were going the right way, but I had a terrible feeling. Something wasn't right. Finally, the sun began to set. I started to panic. Um, are you sure you know where we're going? I asked B.B. for the millionth time. Instead of scowling at me, B.B. began to tremble. Then he did the most un -B like thing. He began to cry. He cried so hard, I thought we would have to swim out of there. I'm lost, he choked. I'm totally and completely lost. I tried to cheer him up. Don't worry, I said. We're lost together. We'll find our way out of here. I promise. I stared at the trees surrounding us. All of a sudden, I had an idea. Let's climb a tree, I said. From way up high, we may be able to see our camp. B.B. brightened. Then he turned sad again. I can't climb a tree, he groaned. My head is still spinning from the bump. You're the only one who can save us, Geronimo. I was worried, but I couldn't let B.B. down. No problems, I said, trying to sound brave. I began to climb. My paws felt like cream cheese, but I remembered Susie Squeaker's advice. Never look down. I climbed higher and higher. After a while I stopped. I stared out over the treetops. There, in the dark, I could see the lights from the camp. I was so happy I felt like I had just been named Author of the Year. I can see the camp. It's over there, I called to B.B. Slowly I climbed down again. As soon as I reached the ground, B.B. hugged me. It turns out he wasn't a real forest ranger after all. He was just a pretend forest ranger at Mousy World, the popular rodent's amusement park. That explained why he couldn't figure out the compass. Fifteen minutes later, we reached the camp. Day 5, Friday Penelope woke us up at dawn with the usual shower of icy water. I was beginning to wonder where she was getting it. I hadn't had a nice icy beverage since we left New Mouse City. After a breakfast of scrambled worms, she gave us a lesson on survival techniques. Ratty trap jungle is full of dangers, she squeaked. You must be careful where you step, as you're about to see. She stuck a red flag in the ground. Sit here, Stelton, she ordered. I was about to sit down when Penelope began to shout. Don't move, Stelton! She kicked away a leaf on the ground. Underneath lay a huge scorpion. Be careful where you step, our teacher repeated. If you had sat down, you'd be a dead mouse, Stilton. I shivered. My life flashed before my eyes. Then suddenly someone was poking me. No time for daydreaming, Penelope shouted. She pointed to the path ahead. Danger is everywhere, she said again. Now walk to the end of the path, Stilton. I set out. I'd hardly taken more than a couple of steps when I was suddenly lifted into the air. A rope was hidden in the bushes. It was a trap. Cheese niblets, I cried. I was dangling upside down. Our teacher chuckled. See what I mean, Stilton, she said, cutting the rope that was holding me up. I fell right on my snout. Ow! I screamed. But Penelope wasn't finished with me. Run toward that tree, Stilton, she demanded. I groaned. What would happen to me this time? Would I be blinded by a sharp tree branch? Would I break all my paws? I sighed. Then I took off. Seconds later, I fell into a deep, dark hole. Help! I shrieked. Our teacher peeped into the hole. Are you still alive, Stilton? She smirked. Good. Deal with it. Then she turned to the others. I hope that you all remember what has happened to our friend here today, she squeaked. Now let's go. My mouth dropped open. I began to shake. This was the lowest of the low. How could she leave me alone in this dark, scary place? It was horrifying. Can you guess why? That's right. I'm afraid of enclosed spaces. I waited three hours. Finally, Penelope came back and pulled me out. I was still shaking, but 
I was proud of myself. I had done it. Yes, I, Geronimo Stilton, had faced another fear. Day 6, Saturday. The next morning, I got up extra early. I hid behind my cabin door. I was going to trick our evil teacher at her own game. When she arrived with a bucket of icy water, I stuck out my paw. She tripped. Water flew everywhere, but not a drop landed on me. Oops, I said when Penelope caught me. She handed me a mop. Clean up this mess, she ordered. But she was half smiling. Not bad, Stilton, she admitted. Not bad for a scaredy mouse. After a breakfast of fried fleas, we lined up. Penelope said she needed a volunteer, someone who was afraid of spiders. I quickly hid behind B.B. I'm sure you already know why. I am afraid of spiders. I'm going to choose a name, our teacher announced. She stared up at the clouds. She pretended to be deep in thought, but she didn't fool me. I knew what was coming. Seconds later she cried, Stilton! Oh, why did she always have to pick on me? I sighed and came forward. Penelope picked up a small cage. It was full of hairy spiders. Stale Swiss rolls, just seeing all those spindly legs, gave me mouse bumps. Just remember to stay calm, she advised. Now close your eyes, Stilton. She placed something on my snout. Keep very still, Stilton, our teacher whispered. And whatever you do, don't open your eyes. I tried, but I was curious. I just had to see what was on my snout. Slowly I peeked open one eye. An enormous hairy spider stared back at me. I was too horrified to squeak. Keep still for ten seconds, Penelope ordered. Then she began to count. The rest of the group joined in. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. My whiskers trembled with fear. You can do it, Tubby shouted. You're almost there, B.B. cheered. Hooray for Stilton, everyone shouted when the countdown was over. I pointed to the spider with a trembling paw. Take it off, please, I squeaked. Our teacher sneered. She took the spider and waved it under my nose. How strange! The spider's legs didn't seem to be moving at all. In fact, it looked quite stiff. I peered at it closely. It's plastic, Stilton, Penelope smirked. I fainted. Moments later, she woke me up with a bucket full of icy water. So much for starting my day off on the right paw. Next, Penelope pulled a huge green snake from a sack. She twisted it up into a ball like a pro. I'm going to teach you how to tell the difference between a poisonous snake and one that is harmless, she said. The one I'm holding now is harmless. Catch it, Silverfur, she shouted, throwing it to Sandy. The old mouse went pale, but she still managed to catch that snake in mid-air. The reptile twisted itself around her neck. Without batting an eyelash, Sandy shouted, Yippee! Everyone applauded. Penelope grabbed another snake from the sack. She whirled it in the air. Always hold a snake by its tail, she explained. This way it can't bite. I watched carefully. It looked so easy. Without thinking, I picked up a snake that looked just like the others. I began whirling it over my head. Look at me, I shouted with pride. For some odd reason, Penelope didn't look happy. Maybe she liked to be the only one showing off. Oh well, I decided old Poison Fur would just have to get used to it. The new Geronimo Stilton was brave. He was tough, and he wasn't afraid to show it. Then I noticed Penelope had dropped her snake. She waved her paws in the air. What was she doing? Some kind of jungle dance? That's a wrong snake, Stilton! Penelope squeaked. It's poisonous! Moldy mozzarella sticks! I was terrified! Don't panic, Stilton, our teacher continued. Just keep whirling it. My knees wobbled. My fur stood on end. Still, I managed to keep whirling the snake. Penelope began playing a tune on a flute. The snake closed its eyes. Soon, it fell asleep. I wish I was sleeping too. Old Poison Fur had started yelling at me. Then she picked me up and began whirling me over her head. Now you'll learn, Stilton. Oh, what a day in the jungle. Day 7, Sunday Saturday night, we marched non-stop. On Sunday morning, we reached our first camp. We had only been gone for one week. Still, 
it felt like a lifetime. I had learned so much. Yes, I had to admit, the course in the jungle had changed my life. After our final bug breakfast, we said our goodbyes. I was sad to see my new friends go. We'd been through so much together. Tubby hugged me. Thank you, Geronimo, he said. If it weren't for you, I'd be at the bottom of a river. Susie Squeakers winked at me. It's great to meet you, boss. Pinky would be proud of you, she grinned. But Birdie Rat crushed my paw in his strong grip, and Sandy Silverfur gave me a photo of me whirling the snake. So you don't forget this course, she chuckled. I grinned. I knew I would never forget my adventures in the jungle, or the friends I had made. I invited them all to New Mouse City. Finally, it was Penelope's turn. I fixed you, haven't I, Stilton? she smirked. I shook her paw. I wasn't about to argue. Penelope had cured me. I felt like a new mouse. I wasn't afraid of anything any more. I could swim in wild rivers. I could climb trees as tall as skyscrapers. I could even eat bug sandwiches. Of course, I didn't have to like them. From now on, I'd be sticking to my favourite kind of sandwiches, the ones with cheese, like grilled cheese on rye, ham and cheese on a hard roll, and cream cheese and jelly on whole wheat. I turned around to leave, then shouted, Thank you, Miss Poison Fur. Penelope waved. You can call me Pee Pee, she giggled. She really was one special mouse. Maybe some day I could take her out to dinner after all, as long as she didn't order any bugs, or make me take her mountain climbing course. Suddenly I was surrounded by my family. Thea, Trap, and Benjamin were a sight for sore eyes. I hadn't realized how much I had missed them. Yes, I know my sister can be bossy at times, and my cousin loves to play pranks on me, but they're still family. Just then my nephew threw his paws around my neck. Are you still angry with me, Uncle Geronimo? Benjamin asked. I stroked his tiny ears and grinned. Of course not, my little mousie, I sighed. I love you too much. Then I hugged Thea and Trap too. You are right, Stiltons, I said. This course was the best thing for me. I'm cured. The same yellow jeep took us back to the airport from camp. Then we boarded a plane to New Mouse City. I couldn't wait to get there. As we were flying home, I thought about everything that had happened to me. I had faced my fears, and I had met four great new friends. Five, if you count Penelope. Yes, this experience had taught me a lot of things. Like it's much easier to overcome a problem if you tackle it together. And... A bucket full of icy water is a terrible way to wake up in the morning. Tell me everything, please. The next morning I went to see Dr. Shrinkfur. Tell me everything, please, he insisted. You are right, Doctor, I squeaked. I went to Ratty Trap Jungle and faced all of my fears. I'm cured. He seemed very pleased. I told you it was all up to you. Ach, my niece is very clever, he murmured. I sat up straight. "'Miss Poisonfur is your niece?' I asked. "'Yes. Well, it was I who gave her name to your relatives,' he confessed. "'I was sure it would work. Penelope style can be a little wacky, but I knew she was the only one who could help you. "'It all boils down to this. "'So I guess that's the end of my story. "'It really all boils down to this. "'I'm no longer afraid of flying. "'I'm no longer afraid of the dark.' I'm no longer afraid of spiders. I'm no longer afraid of snakes. As I said, I'm cured. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Uh, well, there is still one thing. I'm still afraid of cats. But then again, Dr. Shrinkfur says that's perfectly normal. After all, I am a mouse. The End that's all for this time. The next book in the Geronimo Stilton series is Paws Off Cheddar Face. Holy cheese! It was strange. Rodents kept telling me I'd done things I had no memory of. Was I going crazy? Had the cheese finally slipped off my cracker? No, I soon discovered the truth. There was a Geronimo look-alike going around pretending to be me. Worst of all, he was trying to take over the Rodents Gazette. I had to get that greedy impostor's paws off my newspaper. But how? That'll be next time on Dad Can. 
Thank you and good night. Dream.